Hi guys! Um, today we're going to talk about Muscovy ducks. I'm going to give you a little introduction um, to the Muscovy duck. Before we do that, I do have some housekeeping. So if you are just here to learn about Muscovies, I have time stamped this whole video in the about section. So if you don't want to hear my home housekeeping stuff for my channel, or um, you want to know what I discuss with the Muscovies to see if I address a certain topic, check out the about section and then you can skip to whatever part you're interested in. All right, so now that's out of the way. Hi everyone, welcome back to 10 Ducks in the Dog. Um, thanks again for being here. I'm so excited to have you guys. Um, a lot of people. So some housekeeping. The Muscovies won't come out of their coop and I don't blame them. I've been in there. It's actually quite warm, even without the insulation in there yet. I will put the video down that I took this morning. Um, we don't have a door for humans really officially on there yet. Uh, so that space is just covered and it can be kind of a pain in the butt to move. So I don't typically move it unless I have to, to refresh their food and water. So I haven't taken really any long recent videos. I took one this morning that, like I said, I'll pop in there so you guys can see how they're doing in there. And then once we get the official door up, I will, and Anora's a little more settled into the house, I will hopefully be able to go out there and hang out with them for like the hour every morning that I used to. And I'll just hang out with them in their coop. It's fine. So, the videos that I'll be using for this are from summer. So, green grass is not my reality right now. I'm very sad. But unsurprised, it is November in the Midwest, so. The other thing that I wanted to mention is that Saturday we will be, I will be doing a special Saturday video. Um, I don't typically do social media stuff on the weekends. Um, not like regularly because I like having my weekends off. So Saturday I'll be doing a special Saturday video because it is Zephyr's birthday. Um, we don't actually know his birthday, he was astray. He got brought into a shelter in June and then ended up in our home in September. They told us he was 10 months in September, so we just counted back 10 months and picked a random day in November. It's possible that they said he was 10 months when they picked him up in June and then never updated his paperwork and he they just kept saying, oh, he's 10 months and said that for three months and now actually he was over a year when we got him. We don't know. No idea. We just picked November 20th because it seemed like a good day. So, November 20th is the day we celebrate his birthday. And he's got presents. I'm going to make him a cake. So, yeah. That's the housekeeping, I think. That's everything. So, tune in Saturday to celebrate Zephyr's birthday with us. And the Muscovy Duck videos that I'm using today are... Oh, um, okay. So, all of the information that I'm giving about the Muscovies today will be from... Dave Holder reads um, Stories Guide to Raising Ducks. It's, from what I've read about it, it's pretty much the go-to. Um, it's fantastic. I actually really enjoy it. He is a great writer, and I actually really enjoy reading what he says. But it is very technical, and it took me about six months. That's an exaggeration. It took me a while to get through um, the genetics portion but if you're interested in animal genetics he's got a very in-depth chapter on the genetics of coloring of ducks so really interesting but that's where almost all this information comes from so let's get to it say hi duckos yes this is where they're at right now and like i said it's not done so it won't be like a tour tour but um they won't come out of here i don't really blame them so <laughs> um Fresh water, feed, feed, um, yeah, that's why they don't leave. I don't really blame them. So the first big thing to know about Muscovy ducks is that they are a different species than other ducks. Um, interestingly enough, they're in America, in North America, or in the USA. There are two big species of ducks. One which is where my Anconis ball are based off of, or, you know, came out of the wild mallard ducks that most of us are used to seeing. Um, and they're different, like the musk or the Anconis, I think would be considered like a different breed of mallard type duck. Um, on the flip side, muscovies are a South American breed of duck. 
Um, and they are an entirely different species and currently an entirely different genus. So the way that animal classifications go is it starts with kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. And mallard-based ducks and muscovy ducks share everything down to family, and then the last two genus and species are different. Um, it used to be some. It used to be that muscovies and mallards shared a genus. Um, not anymore. I don't know why that changed or what that matters, but their species is different. Um, so what that ends up happening is that you can breed muscovy and mallards, and they get along, and they can be housed together. They're ducks, um, but any offspring that they have, there's like a 99.99999 chance that it's going to be sterile. This is similar to horses and donkeys having children that end up being mules. Um, donkeys and horses also share the same classification up to um, species where they have different species and they also create mules, which can't, which are typically sterile. On very, 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 very rare, super rare occasions, you might get one that's not, but typically. So that said, muscovies are a South American type of duck. Um, they do come from a tropical climate, but they actually adjust really well to the uh, more cold climates. Um, I have heard, though I have not ever been able to verify this, that their feet are more susceptible to frostbite because they are more used to a tropical climate. But typically, as long as they have access to a warm, dry shelter um, with bedding down, they're good to go. So some of the big differences that you can visually see are you see on Bucky, he's got those um, red patches, and you can see it a little bit on some of the girls around their beak. Um, those are called caruncles. They're fleshy bits. They're kind of warty looking. They're not warts, they're just fleshy bits that um, have oil in them. So muscovies have less water resistance than mallard-based breeds of duck. Um, and they, while they do like water, they like water less. I've definitely noticed that my muscovies are in the water less, and it's not uncommon um, for them to try and run over the ground versus... Um, through the water. Most ducks will head straight to the water. And muscovies, you know, some do, some don't. So those caruncles, though, have oil bits in them, and some of the oil kind of rubs, not the oil, but like the covering over them rubs off, and then oil is um, excreted from the caruncles, and that helps with their water resistance. Some female Muscovies will end up getting crunkles on the back of their neck if they have been overbred, and that's not uncommon either. Males do have larger crunkles than females, and for showing muscovies, they prefer like really big crunkles. Um, but a lot of people prefer the look of less crunkles and will breed purposefully for the lesser. But if you're showing, you definitely want the big, big chunky big chunky crunkles, so, yep. Muscovies are typically used as both meat and egg layers. Um, the benefit of muscovies is that they are, females tend to be very broody and are very, very good about raising their own babies, which makes them really great homestead all around ducks. They're great for meat. You can see how big Bucky and Wanda are. They're great meat ducks, they're great egg ducks, and because they really are broody and prefer to raise their eggs and children on their own, you don't generally need incubation. You just need to make sure they have a safe place to lay their eggs. Some people say that muscovies are not as nice, like with humans, they're not as genial as other ducks. Um, I've other heard other people say that they are really people, they like people a lot. My experience, which again is limited, it just depends on how much you socialize them and when. All of my ducks are pretty um, friendly with me, but it does largely depend on how long I've had them and how much time I got to spend with them. I've noticed that the original seven are extremely friendly. Hope, Sylvia, and Dinah are getting there. Um, Wanda's the most friendly, obviously, because I got to socialize her as a baby, and the new ones I just got are kind of meh. 
they don't love me, but they'll get close to me since I've had more time with them. So, um, you know, I feel like it really is more based on how well you're able to socialize the, the ducks more so than their breed. And again, some people will breed for temperament. So they'll purposely take the more friendly ducks by personality and breed them together to try and get, excuse me, greater lines of friendly ducks. And the same is true for muscovies. Interestingly enough, muscovies as South American breeds um, are tree breeds. Uh, a lot of ducks will head to the water when they're scared, but muscovies often perch in breeds, sorry, not breeds, muscovies often perch in trees. And um, I've noticed, especially with my ducks, they like to sit on like the bricks out there. I haven't seen them do it in a while. Or you can see Sylvie on you could, she was on there, <laughs> on the pallet in the back, they like sitting up just a little bit higher. They don't climb the tree the whole way, but they like sitting on the low branches of the trees and it makes them comfortable. The last thing I want to touch on with the muscovies, and there are two things that they're related. Muscovies can fly. Most of the mallard-based ducks can't. They're too big as they're bred for meat production, obviously, and a lot of the male muscovies cannot. They tend to get very large too. Um, but a lot of females can, and even Bucky and Wanda currently can fly. They can fly when they're younger, and then as they get older and bigger, they have a harder time with it. They don't necessarily fly high or far, um, but they do. I have mine fly pretty solidly. Um, this makes them harder to keep in the yard. I haven't had a problem with it yet, so a lot of people will clip their wings. Um, but this is related to the last intro piece of the muscovies they there is a huge feral and population slash wild population of muscovy ducks in southern united states and there are some states that require you that don't allow you to own muscovies because there's so many feral populations some say they're invasive some People argue that they're not because they are great foragers and bug eaters and they can be great pest control I am not um, educated enough to be able to tell you um, what I view, but some people say they're invasive, some people say they're great pest control, and they're not necessarily invasive. Um, but if you are interested in muscovies, you need to check the laws to make sure you can actually have them. Up here, they're not really a problem, and they're super awesome homestead ducks for people that are in the, interested in that homesteading life. And I also just feel like they're great backyard ducks for places that allow backyard ducks. One of the reasons they're great backyard ducks is that they don't quack the way that mallard-based ducks do. They don't have that loud quack, 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 quack that you heard from Helena a couple videos ago. They are, um, they hiss more leading some people to believe that they're more closely related to geese, but from what I've read, they're definitely ducks. They're not geese. They just tend to hiss. The males hiss a lot, and the females will sometimes quack, but mostly hiss. So, I think that's everything. Oh my gosh, so doing that intro video, I realized that there's a lot of information about, like, intro to Muscovy, so, um... We'll stop there for now, but I will probably do some more videos about muscovies, talking more about their sounds, about, I don't know, what it's like to have them, why they make good backyard ducks, their coloring, their, all that kind of stuff. So, so a lot of things that I didn't include. Um, one correction that I would like to make is that at one point in the video, at the very end, I said that female muscovies hiss. That's not entirely true. They do make a little hissy noise, but one way to um, sex adult muscovies is by their noise because the boys make like a loud distinct hiss and just sometimes the girls will make a little hissy noise. Typically the girls make more of a trilly and sometimes on rare occasions they'll do like a, a quiet quacky sound that kind of sounds like a male duck. So a uh, male mallard. Um, so yeah, that was the one correction. They do, females do hiss, but not as distinctly, and you can more easily gender your ducks by hiss versus trill with the muscovies. You will be able to tell visually the difference between the two. Male muscovies are twice the size of female muscovies, or can be, 
and they have like large crunkles and there's just a lot of visual differences which I will get into in another video because I could talk forever about the visual differences through the ages of ducks. Um, so that's all for now. I will make a few more videos on this topic if you're interested. Um, I will put a link in the Again, I'll timestamp the whole thing down in the abouts. I'll also put a link to David Holder, Dave Holder Reed's um, Stories Guide. And I think that's it. Cool beans. All right. Um, I'm going to sign off for today. Sorry for the super long video. Thanks for sticking with me, guys. Um, thanks for liking, subscribing, and sharing my videos. It means the world to me. I'm so excited that I have over 100 followers, and I'm well on my way to 200 subscribers, sorry, not followers, and I'm trying to think of like little prizes and drawings that we can do to celebrate each hundred follower set, and yeah. So, thank you so much for being here, thank you so much for liking, subscribing, and sharing my videos, you guys rock, and we'll see you guys Friday. Thanks for tuning in, folks. See you later.